Welcome to our webinar on creating engaging content. We have some exciting things that we want to discuss with you and also show you, but how about some fun facts really quick? So did you know that on average, trainers spend between 40 and 80 hours to create a half hour of training? Also, we might be wasting about $3.5 million on annual basis for ineffective training. And 62% of training managers think they're not meeting their learners' needs. So I wanted to quickly introduce myself. I'm Natia Seegers, Director of Marketing here at MindFlash. And I have been doing these types of trainings and such for quite some time, actually. And um, over the time, I've actually learned a lot. And we're in the business of training. So hopefully, you guys will learn a lot. We will. Um, incorporate the things that you've shared with us. And I want to set the stage for what we're going to do in terms of how we actually are going to conduct this training. I thought it might be a little bit of a fun thing to make this kind of informal and more like a discussion. So I'm going to need your help to make that happen. And so I'm going to walk you guys through the process. So first of all, before we get started, I wanted to show you um, a couple of these, uh, the functionalities. So in case you're engaging with us and you go to your GoToWebinar control panel, you'll know where to find everything. First of all, you're going to be muted for the entire webinar. We have about 300 people who are engaged with us today, so it might not be the best user experience to unmute you guys. But we are going to give you a chance to have some uh, some fun and have some to give some feedback and dialogue in some way. And I thought that since we have such a large group today, that maybe we would even open it up to have uh, have you guys engage with one another. And I'll explain how to do that when we get there uh, during the course of today's webinar. If you are obstructed by your control panel for whatever reason, you can hit that arrow that's right up at the top of your screen, upper upper left, if you see that. Um, also, as I said, we have muted everyone, so uh, don't worry about that. If you have a question or something like that, you could just throw it in the chat box and we will uh, respond. There's a little section down there that says questions. Um, and then you can raise your hand because the most important part of, of engagement, and I, I will actually show you guys the statistics and in particular the survey results, that you guys um, gave us before we started here. So <clears throat> as I already mentioned, our agenda has been cre created by you. And this format is gonna be what I'm calling interactive instruction. And how the heck can you do interactive instruction on a webinar? Well, the fun thing is this is a challenge for me. And I'm gonna um, basically kind of go um, at this from a standpoint of being um, sort of a day in the life experience. So I'm going to use today's webinar as a learning tool for you guys to engage with me. And I also want you to give me feedback because the next time I run this webinar or another webinar, I want to be able to take it to just a whole different level. Um, and I also feel like we can constantly learn from one another. We're all trainers at, at, in some respect. So we've heard you loud and clear. And... <laughs> By and large, the most important thing for everyone on this call was to make training more interactive and um, find ways to do that. And then the second part <clears throat> that was just almost just as important was tools and tech for engaging training. So what I'm going to do is kind of try to slice this up in a couple of ways in the process. Uh, we're going to do sort of before, during and after. And hopefully you guys will, I'm going to give you a chance to, to chime in at each stage because that's the most important thing. Again, you guys have to participate in order for this to be engaging. And I know it's very difficult <laughs> to be engaged in a webinar, especially when you have emails and you have cell phones, text messages and, and other priorities that come as they normally do but I'm gonna ask you respectfully to really, really try to dial into this and really try to be engaged as much as possible. And then at the end, I definitely want you to give me a couple of tips and pointers uh, for, for this as well. Before I move on um, 
to the other ones. The last thing I, I realized I didn't mention is that the engagement metrics is another part that everyone kind of, you know, it was a smaller segment. So what we're going to do with those is all of the ones that um, kind of didn't take precedent here, we're going to cover these in a secondary uh, follow-up asset with you guys and share a couple of things with you that you can, you can follow up with. And that'll be a part of, as I said, the after. So um, what's the number one barrier for creating engaging training? And here's the thing. Everyone was just very clearly just didn't know how to do it. What are the steps? What are the ways that I can do this? Um, and then it was really nice to see that there were some other barriers that people also sort of laid out here. And that is, you know, they have remote workers or people that they need to engage outside of the one-on-one -on -one in-person construct. Another thing was a language barrier for distributed workforces. Uh, and then there's some unwilling participants. Again, sometimes you're going to get those and you don't have full control. But I have a couple of solutions and strategies that I want to share with you. Uh, to help you with those things as well. And participants need incentive. So when you have a training that's not something that you're forcing everyone to do, meaning it's not mandatory, that becomes even more tricky. It means you have to be a better trainer. You have to make it more exciting. And it doesn't help that the world is becoming more exciting around us. You know, there's not, there are so many distractions, even when you're sitting on your own sofa in the house. Uh, so that's something that we have to factor into how we keep things interesting and engaging. So with that in mind, I kind of wanted to just shift gears just for a brief moment. So this is going to be your first test. If you can see me by show of hands, go ahead and use the raise hand icon that we just showed you and show me that you can see me. All right, let's see here. Uh, okay. Okay. It looks like you guys are seeing me. I see a good number of you. Thank you guys for participating here. I mean, as we've already figured out, and the reason we're all here is because we want to figure out ways that we can keep these webinars and trainings and everything uh, that we're doing a little bit more engaging and connect with our audiences in a better way. And I have to say that sometimes when you're on a digital medium, such as a webinar or online or any other way where you're training remotes, one of the things that becomes really, really challenging is to find a way to connect in real life. Uh, and you can't meet me face to face. So I felt like I could do a little bit of something different by showing you my face and letting you see me say, hello. So hi, and uh, really quickly, I wanted to go ahead and give you a little bit of the back of house treatment, introduce you to my tech, who is our digital marketing manager, hey. who's helping out on all the whole thing here. He is responsible for helping make sure everything goes smoothly. And uh, so you got to meet a little bit of the Mind Flash team, and we're gonna go ahead and turn it back around, and we're gonna keep this excitement. Thanks so much again for participating, and I'm gonna move on to the next slide. So <clears throat> I just wanted to go back to one of the, the tactics that I've used just here is, is uh, all about just keeping engaged with the audience that I'm working with, that I'm communicating with. And that's one of the things that I'm, uh, I'm really trying to work towards. So now um, what we're going to cover now, you've already gotten a sneak preview because you're the ones who told me what we should cover, but I'll kind of break it down. We're going to start with the nuts and bolts of engagement, uh, what makes training suck, and uh, a quick action plan and a focus on the customer. And because I'm trying to do this in a way that's not exactly just structured, I want it to be more open and more dialogue oriented. I'm going to have you guys, I'm going to kind of loosen up the agenda a bit in terms of which things we cover in what particular order. All right, so I already mentioned this briefly at the very beginning, but I thought it was worth it to just really bring this up again. And that is, what is <clears throat> the cost and how much are we wasting when we hold unengaging, boring, ineffective trainings? 
And right now we're looking at about $13.5 million. And that is even just specifically talking about training for, in, for employees. So if we were to expand that to people who are in the customer group or people who are partners that we're training or any other stakeholders who are being trained, then you have to imagine that this could, this could get pretty high and be a really significant amount of money. So I think this pretty much says what the cost of not doing it is and the reasons and advantages of, of making your training more engaging. <clears throat> so we have a poll really quick that we're going to uh, show, and I am going to pull the poll in just a moment. I'm going to have you put the answers inside of, um, inside of the chat. Okay, what are your goals for making training more engaging? And because I can't show this to you because of the polling issue, I'm going to give you the options that I have and feel free to just make them whatever they are. Uh, the first is increase learner satisfaction. The second is help learners retain information or encourage people to take optional training or spice up annual repetitive training. And you can feel free to go ahead and just enter whatever your answer is down at the bottom. I'm seeing them. Thank you so much for participating. I'm going to give you guys a couple more seconds. So it looks like the majority of people are saying that they are wanting to, in general, help people to get more out of the training. Oh, OK. And there's another one who really wants to figure out how to help people engage on mobile. That's a good one. Okay, and, and also improve retention. So the majority of people on this call, I will say, I'm, I'm scrolling through all of these responses. Oh, wow. <laughs> Some are saying all of the above. Um, so the top two are increased learner retention. And then the other, it looks like there's some people, a lot of people on here who have to do the same old, same old. And how do you spice up some, how do you spice it up and make it different each time? I wanted to walk you guys through understanding engagement as a whole. And I'm going to apply a whole bunch of, I've done a lot of research on the word engagement, on customer engagement, on all of these things. And the one thing that I want to first start with with you guys is just helping you to realize the, that your learners are your customers, regardless of the, if they're internal employees. Uh, if this is mandatory or whatever, think of yourself as providing a service and that you're providing it to an end user who is also your customer. So I found a couple of really good definitions of what customer engagement looks like. And I basically applied that to what I believe to be the most important part of creating uh, an engaging experience. And that is learner engagement is all about how your learners interact and connect with the experiences you create for them. So basically you're an experience creator. So you're building experiences for your customers and by customers, I mean your learners to really enjoy, to, uh, to also participate in and to learn from. So. <clears throat> so I have broken this down into four sort of segments that I think uh, should be included, and I'm going to ask for your feedback on this. Number one, engaging training connects with the learner. And what I like about this diagram here is that you might have a whole different set of audiences depending on who you are. For example, if you're training employees, maybe you have different audiences based on what what particular um, group they sit in, if they're in sales versus marketing versus, you know, whatever. Or you might have a divide between levels of seniority, meaning you have a manager or you have those who are employed and, and being managed. So I think it's really important to make sure that you're connecting with that right audience with your training. Think about if you're training a team of executives then you have another set of requirements that you need to, to meet uh, in order to meet and exceed their expectations versus a group of people who are, are new to the business and are just being onboarded 
um, for example. And the same goes with if you're training partners or if you are training customers, it's just really important to think about how you can tailor not only the experience, but also the content to meet their needs. So the second one is make sure the expectations are clear and that you have a clear set of outcomes as well. And this is going to become more and more important as you go forward with uh, with making your training more engaging, because I think this is a big part of connecting with someone. Figure out how you can meet, you know, meet their expectations, but also that you set expectations for what they should get out of it. Um, and before I go to this third one, I just kind of wanted to just sprinkle in there something that if you noticed what I did at the beginning is, hey, I want you guys to really engage with me. This is super important. And even before you showed up here, I got your feedback to figure out what was important to you and how I could also address the things that were were going to be really key. So <clears throat> interactive exchange is another aspect, which is basically. I want to highlight the exchange portion of this. I mean, yeah, we know we need to make this interactive. We need to get people involved. We need to get people excited. But another aspect of this, which is super important and probably even more important, is exchange. And so what you're going to see throughout this entire presentation is that I'm going to focus on two things, connecting with the learner and creating an experience that helps them to exchange with you. Because it has to be more than just one-sided. If I sit here for the next 30 minutes and just keep talking, you're gonna start dialing out. And if you're tuning out now, I'm asking you to come on back. <laughs> um, all right, so the last thing is experience is at core. Just as I mentioned, I think it's so important that you are thinking about yourself as an experience uh, creator. I actually do have, as I mentioned in my video, if you saw the video I sent beforehand, I have a few surprises, but I'm not going to let them out of the bag just yet. But just keep engaging with us and you may find out that there's some rewards for good behavior and participation on this webinar. All right. So building an engaging training experience. Number one, learn from your learners and then align your goals with theirs. Um, I think that's going to be really important. And I think one thing that I got feedback, I, I, just to give you a little bit of, of storytelling, the one thing that I wanted to, to bring up at this point is that I've been doing webinars for several years now. And in the corporate environment, it's very easy to structure your trainings, especially webinars, as just a lead funnel um, where the entire goal is to help people understand your product. I think the challenge with that, and I've received feedback even on, on a few recent webinars, that uh, it's not showing a clear value just for the person who's showing up. And so you have to think about, yes, your goals, yes, you want them to take the training or it's required or whatever, but find a way to meet them in the middle and align your goals with theirs. I think you'll find that the participation will be increased. The satisfaction will also increase just because you're being more attentive to their needs. Okay, so now I'm gonna go off camera. <laughs> so uh, focus on the experience. And I think this is about uh, one of the things that I like to think about when I think of building out goals. And I'm gonna show you this uh, on the next couple of slides is that when you're setting goals for your, for your experience, a big part of it is not just, hey, I need to train the goal of this training is that um, everyone learns X. I think you also need to put in those softer, um, softer sort of success metrics as a part of your goals as well. Meaning uh, the person was able to engage, they engaged or they took quizzes during my training and the first time it was so well structured that the first time they got the answer right or something that makes it so that you can track and think about it from a standpoint of the experience. Or you want people to leave feeling just as energized after a whole long day, if it's an in-person, um, as they were when they came. And that's because you found ways to integrate fun into the learning experience. And you know, in the education realm, this isn't new. Um, they have been doing studies on, on children who play as well as 
as uh, engage in more um, more of the institution process. And I think that it's really uh, amazing that the kids who are playing are actually getting better. Um, they're having better learning experiences and they're learning more and they're retaining more of the information, even though they might spend less time in instruction. So just think about that in the process. Um, also use your resources. And what I like to think of when I think of resources, <clears throat> resources could be anything. Number one, if your training is boring, how about bring in a guest speaker? Why do you have to be the speaker? Are you the only person who can do the training? Is there a way for you to allow uh, someone who's been successful at you know something or whatever, if it's safety training, bring in someone from OSHA, or maybe make it a little bit of shock therapy, bring in someone who survived after having an accident. I mean, I don't know, but think about it from a different perspective of how can you reach the audience? Um, and if it's not in person, you can still, this is even better because you can, with the right tools, you can drop in a video or you can engage people using video. And that means that you don't have to get a speaker. You can just find someone who does the speaking for you and can make it a little bit different. So find some ways, think about how you can spice it up because I think there's so much out here. There's so much content in the world that there's so many different ways that you can do it. So just use your resources. Do you have a, a team of people who are focused on social media strategy or marketing? Engage your marketing stakeholder to help you build a deck or help you spice it up or do a social media campaign so they can follow up with you afterwards or, or get excited about your training beforehand. So think about that when you think of your resources. It's not just you know your budget. It's also the people around you. It's also the, the content that is available to you. It's also... Uh, the social media and, and the different tools that are available. And then the last thing I want to mention is tracking your success. Again, super important. You need to start with a goal and end with your goal. That's how you're going to measure your success. <clears throat> I want to ask you guys a question. Do you ask for your learner's input, you know, prior to or during or after in particular, before the training, do you ask for input? Looks like we've got about 56% of you guys who have responded say that you do ask for feedback before the training. So that's pretty remarkable, I have to say. All right, so what I wanted to show you now was um, something about making it exciting here. And what I wanted to show is an example in real life. So for all of you guys who have been raising your hands, we've been tracking it. All of you who are participating in the polls, we're also tracking that. And we're going to track the next portion, portion, which is, you know, the questions that we're going to ask. And we also want you to ask questions and we're going to give people an opportunity to respond uh, as well. What we're going to do is we're going to sweeten the deal for you. For all of you who are participating and you still have a chance because the webinar is still going. Um, for all of you who are participating in the webinar, I just wanted to um, say that we're going to give you guys uh, an opportunity to get some cupcakes sent to your job or ice cream or even just a, a gift card to Starbucks. Um, and you'll have an option. We're going to do a couple of drawings by the end of this um, this training. And uh, just for the, the context of being in a webinar setting, we won't be able to do it in real life, uh, meaning live, but we will follow up directly with you guys. Um, everyone who's on the webinar will find out who the winners are and it'll be really exciting and it'll be fun. And there's lots of opportunities before, during, and as well as after to, to be able to, to win. All right, so what I also wanted to um, say there was um, that before the training, you need to send a message and then also maybe do a pre-training survey. Have you ever seen the usage of videos or GIFs or things that are really more fun and exciting? Then, yeah, those are the things that I'm talking about. So also, maybe, like I said, sweeten the deal. Think of ways to you know, give, give a, a little bit of a reward to the audience members who are participating. So now I'm going to go ahead and throw up another poll. The question is, what type of content do you learn from the most? And we're going to share the results. Okay. 
So now I'm going to go ahead and ask you guys to give me a little bit more feedback, which is going to be a little fun. So you can, again, join in in the chat or the questions section with your response. Don't forget you have an opportunity to win here. I mean, it may not be a super big prize, but I like free things. So here's a question for you. Have you ever sat through a boring training? In this case, all you have to do is raise your hand if you've sat through boring training. If you've ever done it, training has been boring to you. Cool. Okay. Thank you guys for your participation. Also wanted to ask you guys to join in in the question section and go ahead and let me know and let the whole group know. So now the question is, what makes training boring? When you've ever had to sit through a boring training, why was it so boring? Just call out in the in the question section there. Couple of reasons why. Okay, trainer didn't engage the group, not simple enough, poor presentation, the tone of the training. Oh yes, monotone, lack of visuals, all of these are things. And even sometimes the content. Oh, okay. These are great answers. Thank you guys. Um, passive listening, I'm just gonna say enough of them, not enough breaks. <laughs> Okay, oh, yep, not not to the point it was too salesy, no interactive, no, no interaction, sorry, um, and being talked at the whole time. Very good. Okay, cool. Thank you, guys. All right, <clears throat> so what are some ways you could make it fun? And I'm trying to give you guys a chance to answer for each other because I know there's some people in here who've done it before, and I've got some suggestions as well, but let's uh, let's all take a moment and we're going to respond to that just the same way we just did with the questions and I'll read the answers. Again, what are some ways you could make training fun? You can completely think out of the box here too. All right, so it looks like the answers to this question are Oh, have a contest, offer prizes throughout the training, have some treats, ask your audience or students questions to get them talking, add fun elements, get people up and moving, dancing bears. <laughs> That's a great answer, Mark. Um, make it competitive among groups. That's a really interesting one because um, you'll see gamification and even giving prizes is considered a part of gamification as, as a concept. Uh, do polls, ask questions, show video. Awesome. Um, lots of games where attendees need to give their opinions and also talk about themselves. I like that answer, Lynn, because you're saying give, let them talk about themselves and give input from themselves. I think that's great. Consider games. Um, teach back. YouTube. Small groups. All right. So this is great. Inject humor and use compelling images. All right, so this is awesome. There's so many responses. This is this is great. Um, make some jokes, group work, and work in teams. Great. Thank you guys. This is this is great. This is making it fun for me. Just to, just to let you know. All right. So now let's get back to the training. And I think you guys have already said it. And I'm not going to repeat what you've already said because you already know. And um, what I'm going to say again ask for participation. I think that you guys will agree that that's what we're doing right now is asking for participation. Um, <clears throat> find common ground. In this case, well, I'm going to use, you know, this as an example. Um, what I know is that you're a trainer and I'm a trainer. And so we have some common ground. We each have some barriers. And I have to say, I'm really, I'm really nervous every time I have to get in front of a group of trainers because I know I have to be up on my game. And there's some things that sometimes, as I say, things don't go well. And to be completely transparent, I am a person who prefers to be in person because I'm an in-person kind of gal. Uh, and technology scares me sometimes, especially because it doesn't always work exactly how we want. Uh, so webinars are already a little bit more intimidating uh, to start with, just, just to bear my soul um, right now for you guys. 
But there are ways to find common ground, even but even when you're in the middle of a computer. And I think part of that is, you know, start talking to to the group uh, while they're there. Uh, get to know their names if you're in person. Uh, if you're if you're on the webinar again, like what we're doing now, we're asking them, asking you guys to engage with us and also share your input. And I think that already creates a little bit of that commonality. And then reward participants. We're going to give you guys some rewards for participation because you guys have been awesome already. And this is by far one of my most fun uh, webinars. And then ask questions. <clears throat> All right. So we have one more, one more fun poll here. And the question now is, how do you currently con conduct your trainings? So we talked about a couple of different contexts. One could be in person, online, meaning it could be webinars or, you know, a learning management system. All right, we're going to close the poll and share the results. <clears throat> All right, it looks like, as I said, 52 now uh, percent of you are doing both in-person and online training. Yep, in-person is a little easier to get the engagement going. Uh, so now I wanted to just really quickly, in, in keeping with even the things that you guys suggested, I wanted to give you guys a, a chance to ask us or ask the audience some questions. So what I'll do is, um, again, open up the question section. And right now you can ask any questions about during or after, before, whenever, or whatever. Okay. Um, okay, here's a really good question. Do you ever get feedback about the fact that large groups on GoToWebinar are muted? We all, we mute all too. I wonder if people dislike it. And I just wanted to say, just to clarify, because I think, thank you, Anita. Um, we don't have the lines open, but maybe we'll try. You know what? We said we're going to try new things this time. Just don't judge us. I'm going to see if I can try to open up the line for individuals um, to speak. Point. What do you do to keep remote learners engaged and to verify or validate engagement? OK, so we have that question about remote employees. OK, OK. Um, how to silence participants who speak all the time during training? Oh, OK. And I, I, I'm i sorry, I tried to open up this microphone for, for people and it seems like it's a little bit more. OK, actually, here we are. OK, we're going to. We're going to try. I'm going to go ahead and let you, Stacy. I think it's Stacy. I'm going to go ahead and try with you and unmute you. Hopefully this works. This is all a lesson for all of us. Let's take a look. Stacy, can you hear us? Hi. I can. Hi, Nadia. How are you? I'm very well. Probably better than I deserve. How are you? Oh, why don't you can go you ahead hear? and ask your question? So my question is, my remote my workforce is completely remote, scattered like dandelion fluff. So it can be a real challenge to keep them, the learners engaged and to ensure that they remain engaged, to keep, to understand and validate that engagement. So I'm curious, how do other trainers verify or validate that engagement? Thank you so much for the question. And now what I'm going to try to do again is have you guys um, go ahead and uh, raise your hands if you want to or have an answer to uh, and have an answer for this. I'm going to start with Lynn here and then I'm going to open it up for for, uh, for Lauren. All right, Lynn, can you hear us? I can. Can you hear me? Sure can. So um, this actually came from a time when I had to do a, um, I lost some points on my driver's license and had to do, do one of those little um, seminar things and they had content that was written on the screen some of the content was audio over and some of it was spoken by the presenter that you had to see um, and so when people have to listen to watch and engage in all those different ways to be able to put their answers down uh, i find that to be a really good tool 
That's awesome. Thank you so much, Lynn, for your response. And uh, Lauren Knack, I think I'm saying your name. I'm going to unmute you. All right. Go ahead there. <clears throat> Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Um, I was just saying uh, in response to the question about how to engage remote learners is that if you have a small enough group that people are comfortable with each other, you can call specific names out. Um, so, you know, it really makes people pay attention, make sure they're not gazing up, you know, off in space. So, um, so yeah, obviously you want to do it with a right group of people and um, don't want to make your your audience feel uncomfortable, but it can be um, a really good way to keep everybody on their toes. Yes. Okay. And thank you so much for your response. I'm going to, I'm going to go to one more person. That'll be Jackie uh, to answer. And then I will share the rest of the answers with other people and we'll take one more question. Okay. So Jackie, I'm really probably not going to say your name, right? So Varen, I think maybe you can correct me now. You're unmuted. If you can, if you can hear me, I can hear you. I think Jackie, are you there? Yeah, my answers were just when I do remote trainings that I basically do um, a lot of interactive questions just dispersed throughout, just short couple questions here and there, so that I pause and let them respond, as similar to what you're doing um, over the audio. And then also I came up with this technique that really the last time I did it, um, well, the first time I did it, I got raves from the customer. It was a customer training. And that was actually giving them homework that they had several days to do following up. And then that gave me a chance to kind of have a check in with them a few days later. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. OK, I'm going to go ahead and ask. Uh, I'm going to give another question, uh, another opportunity for a question. Let's see. I wanted to give my colleague Faison here a chance to chime in. He's been so excited and hearing all the ideas that are being shared. So uh, he had a couple of ideas himself. So I'm just going to pass it off to him. Thanks, Atia. This is awesome. I just want to say a couple of things. First of all, love the collaboration here. It's just so great to hear everyone's opinions and you know what they've learned throughout their experiences. And second of all, I was kind of thinking about the polls before of what types of content people resonate the best with in terms of learning. And I was thinking about, you know, video is such a great example. And another example I'd like to give you is from Virgin America. I thought it was so remarkable what they did is they turned a boring safety video into a dance party. And usually I'm there putting my headphones sleeping, but I was like getting my groove on. So I think that was awesome. And lastly, I just wanna say thank you so much for everything. This has been awesome, great engagement, and looking forward to great strategies ahead. Thanks, that was so great. And uh, again, we're gonna try to keep this informal and make it more of a discussion. So hopefully you don't mind that I just winged it over here and let him join into the conversation as well. And we're gonna keep it moving. As I said, I wanted to make sure that we made this engaging and kept that first promise so we can see this in real time. Cause I think we learn more uh, by doing and by experiencing. Uh, I did get some, uh, some ideas here on, on giving out some of those prizes and so now this is fun so now I, I have a sense that i can see things so we're gonna randomly pick we're gonna randomly pick a person who has been participating this whole time uh okay and it's gonna be for this round we're gonna give you a drum roll here uh, and and we're gonna go ahead and award our first Recipient, Kim Thomas. Thank you so much for participation. All right, so what I'm gonna do, just as I said, is I'm gonna kind of run, I'm like really gonna speed through this, but I wanna make sure that you guys know that I will follow up with everything that we've done here <clears throat> just now. Um, and as well, I will have a write-up of all of the takeaways and and I always follow up my webinars with some uh, with some additional resources that will be helpful to you. So anything that we didn't cover here, because I want to respect the time, and I think that for me, and I hope that this is the same for you guys, that you are going to feel at least that you you got to witness the experience of an interactive <laughs> webinar. 
Um, and I'm going to ask you guys to, to let me know just in just a bit. <clears throat> so after the training, you're going to definitely need to get some feedback and then apply it to your next plan. So a lot of times we get feedback, but it's very hard just as human beings to take feedback and apply it. And even sometimes to redirect your, your focus and, and, and apply it in a different way. So think about that, like, you know, maybe even structure some time after your, your training. I, I leave a day <laughs> um, after the webinar to do all of my follow-up activities. And I just wanted you to uh, know that. So um, it's um, there are some there's some feedback here. Sorry, just double checking to make sure I'm not missing anything. Thank you guys for your participation. This is awesome. And again, reward your participants. The thing that I didn't um, actually include here, which I will add to to this slide deck before I send it, is to also send follow up assets. If there's things that can follow up to help them, you know, reiterate their training and things like that, then make sure that we. Uh, incorporate those things. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about the te uh, the helpful tools with this last, I'm going to say two minutes. And I said I'm going to fly through them. But um, again, helpful tools, if you're using webinars or hand raising, questions and answers, polling, and we just discovered just together, because I've never done this, <laughs> uh, I've never opened up the microphone for such a huge group of people. And I think I'm going to get better at it. This was my first time, I have to say, um, really doing it. And I'll, I'll figure out ways to make it so we can do it more frequently throughout. Um, also, quizzes and surveys are really helpful to understand how people are engaging and also how they're retaining the information that you're putting forward. Um, and there's free tools out there that you can use to survey or poll uh, or ask you know, quiz questions. And I'll give you a more exhaustive list as a part of the follow-up assets that I provide. Obviously, there's some presentation tools that we all know and love. And then there's a learning management system, which MindFlash, in case you don't know, we're learning management. And we kind of allow you to incorporate a lot of the different training techniques that make uh, training interactive, um, interactive. And you can drop in your slides and all of those things. But back to hearing feedback, that was all I'm going to talk about around specifically MindFlash things. Um, but then the last thing I want to cover is these other tools to help you build and deploy that content. Um, and so number one, you've got YouTube, Animatron, Wave, and Animaker are super cool tools that you can use to make videos. I mean, really, really um, out of the box, you can make things super fast. And also YouTube has some, some free music and some, thing, some templates that you can use built in now. So then um, the other thing that I wanted to mention is that you don't have to make it stiff. And I didn't cover this to, to begin with, but I just wanna say the one thing that I decided purposely to do is try to make this more realistic as if I was talking to you as individuals as, instead of just talking to you as, uh, a, you know, as a big group and talking at you the whole time. Um, and so part of that was making this a more informal thing and trying to establish more of a dialogue experience if you can do that through a webinar. And I really appreciate you guys helping me because that was one of my goals to get everyone engaged. And this was by far one of the most engaging uh, webinars I've done and I'll apply it in the future. But course authoring tools um, include Adobe Captivate, Articulate Scorm. Um, and again, you can build out some amazing slide decks, some, some great templates through Presenter Media and Slide Carnival. Uh, and then again, we have the learning management um, in this, uh, scenario, which helps you really build, track, and deploy. You can arrange and different things like that if you use a, ma a learning management tool. So I think that is pretty much everything. This is the last chance for us to cover. Actually, um, I'm going to go ahead and show my camera, and we're going to end in just one minute here. I just wanted to say thank you so much for all of your participation during the course of this webinar. Uh, for you guys who are watching this video after the fact, I just wanna say, uh, hopefully you can draw from some of the things that we've done on this webinar to make it a little bit more interactive. We've given people an opportunity to join in, to talk, to give their feedback, their ideas, to ask questions. We even opened up the microphone and tried something a little bit different. So what's exciting is that 
you guys have even helped me as a trainer and a marketer to even practice doing things that are a little bit different and unconventional to make the difference for an experience that could be awesome. So wanted to thank you so much again, and we look forward to hosting you on our next webinar. Thanks. Bye.